Welcome! This video is going to explore using if and if-else conditional blocks and working with Boolean operations. So for our first program, we're going to write a script that asks the user for a letter and tells them if it is a vowel or a consonant. So well, I've already got the ask block here and I know that after I do an ask, um, whatever my answers will be stored in the answer variable. So if I ask and I put in B, we'll have B. Now, I need to decide, based on that, do I say that is a vowel or is that is a consonant. And any time you find yourself wanting to make a choice, I'm either going to do that or I'm going to do that, what you're looking for is a conditional. And the typical conditional is an if statement. Now, the way the if statement works is if something is true, we're going to do something. And so whatever I put in here, and I can put as many blocks as I want in there, um, whatever we put inside there is only going to happen if whatever is here is true. And you can see it's a kind of an elongated hexagon shape. Anything that's that shape is something that's going to give us a true or false answer. True is just always true. False is always false. So because we've got false there, nothing happens if I try and run that script. Um, those Occasionally we need those. But more often, the way we generate a true or false value is with relational operators. So here's a less than block. Is 2 less than 3? Why, yes, that's true. Is 4 less than 3? No, that's false. Is 3 less than 3? That's false also. Uh, because 3 equals 3. If we test for equality, uh, that'll give us true. So let's start simple and assume that the only vowel in the world is A. So what I want to be comparing is my answer, which I know is stored here, and I want to compare that to the letter A. Right. right now that's false because my answer is B. If I cheat for a second and change that, answer will be true. Or the result will be true because my answer is B and that's what I'm looking for. So we're going to make that the condition for the if and I'll attach it to my ask. So let's try A, and it tells me that is a vowel, because we've got a match. If I put in E, it says nothing, because we don't know that E is a vowel. Now, we could duplicate that whole thing and say, well, if A is a vowel, say it. If E is a vowel, say it. All right, so now if I say E, it does it because we've got this one to catch it. And I could duplicate that again and do I. Uh, this is starting to get kind of messy. So I need A, E, I, O, U in the same code over and over and over. And remember, one of our golden rules for programming is if you find yourself copying and pasting big chunks of code, you're probably doing it wrong. So we're going to explore a different, different way to do this correctly. Um, so I want to essentially do all these tests, and A, E, I, let me duplicate this and make an O, and one more, oops, let's try that again, so here's my U and my O, and I want to test each of those, and if any one of them is true, I want to say this message. And I want to do that without a whole bunch of ifs. So the way we make a compound condition is with and and or. These Boolean operations that allow us to combine um, values. Um, and says two things have to be true, which that's not going to work for, for me because there's no way my answer can be both A and E. What I want is or. If my answer equals A or my answer equals E, Either one of those would be good enough to know that I've got a vowel. And so when we start putting things together like this, you got to be careful of what um, location you drop them in. Um, but now I've got a script that recognizes A, recognizes E. To get to recognize the rest of them, I'm just going to have to chain together some, some more OR options. So my answer can be A, OR and I need to fit more than one thing there, so I'm going to drop another OR in. 
or my answer can be E, or same idea, I've got three things left, so I've got to make some more holes by putting another OR in, A, E, I, and try and get right there, or, well, I still need two more holes to fit those O and U, so I'll expand that out again. There we go. So answer can be A, or answer can be E, or I, or O, or U. Um, pretty big, but it does allow me to put that in as one thing and drop it into the if condition. And now I don't have to duplicate this code over and over and over, which is nice. So A, that's a vowel. Try one more. I'll try the O. That's a vowel. If any one of these pieces is true, the whole thing will be true, and we'll say this is a vowel. Now the else, the if else, the else part, is kind of the otherwise. So I'm going to steal, whoop, grab my whole block, and I'm going to replace the plain if with an if else. So we'll get rid of that. We'll put an if else in. So I've got a test here. If it's one of these, then that's a vowel. Otherwise, it must be a consonant. Only one of these two things will ever happen. We'll either say a vowel or a consonant, and we'll never say both. So let's try it out. If I do E, this is true, so the whole thing is true. So we say vowel, we skip that. And let's actually duplicate this for a second. Um, and say all done. So I'll try A, oops, let's try it again, put A in, tells me that's a vowel, and then says all done. All right. Skips from here, doesn't do the else, goes right to the instruction after the if. Now let me try a consonant, so I'll put in G, none of these are true, so the whole thing is false, so it skips over the if and says that is a consonant, and then goes ahead and says all done. Kind of whatever comes after the if else gets executed no matter what once we're done picking which of these two options to do. Now the one thing I don't really have accounted for is why. Um, right? We're not sure about why. Some words it's a vowel, some it's a consonant. So I need a way to shoehorn that in. So I'm going to think about breaking this into categories. My first test is, is it a vowel? If so, yes. Otherwise, I'm not sure. Otherwise, it might be a consonant or might be a vowel. So to distinguish between those two, I could actually do another if else. Um, so let's check and see. Checking to see all the consonants would be a real pain, listing all those. So instead, I'm going to check and see if what I've got looks like uh, a Y. So I'm going to duplicate just that part. Does my answer equal? A Y. If so, we're going to say question mark. If my answer is something else, um, then we're going to say it's a consonant. Just get a new answer in there. Um, and so now I can try this block again. All right, because my answer is not a Y, we're going to go to the else. And we can put this if else inside the original else. So if we see a vowel, we'll do this, and then we'll skip the whole else part. If we don't see a vowel, then we know to come do the else, and the else says to make another check. Do we have a Y? If so, say question mark. Otherwise, say that's a consonant. So let's start with a vowel. Good. We just get the right message. Um, let's try the Y, and we get the mystery, and then all done. And if we do anything else, let's try Q. We're told that's a consonant, and we're all done. 